the narcissist, um, where does that come developmentally? Is that some, some trauma that happened earlier? What, what's the general census on h how you do become the narcissist in, uh, in this day and age? It's funny because if you look at because that technically is a personality disorder, and a lot of the research would suggest that there's a continuum. And there's a point at which personality disorders become so pronounced that there's certainly some significant trauma and maybe some uh, genetic or biological components need to be thought about. But from Kohut's perspective, um, uh, narcissism and even some of the other thinkers in psychoanalytic thought like Kernberg and whatnot, there is some sort of developmental trauma. There is something that the individual didn't get, and you can think of it this way. Narcissism is a solution to a developmental trauma. This they have adapted and become the best they could be to be able to navigate and negotiate some very difficult points early in their life and they get stuck with it. So uh, Freud called it making the best of a bad job. That's kind of what it would be. Mm -hmm. um, and Coet would say that uh, all of us begin as um, a reflection in our mother's eye. So we have to find mirrors in our life to reflect back to parts of us that we can begin to own and integrate a self. Okay, so uh, this person is really trying to do the best they can with trying what they the have at this, yeah. at this point. On the other hand, back to selfishness, that's a big component of the narcissistic. I have to be the center of attention. Mm -hmm. Everything has to go my way. I won't tolerate anybody else being better. Mm -hmm. I can't accept any help mm -hmm. uh, in some yeah. ways. And so I think mm -hmm. a lot of that uh, is about self sort of just just really blown out of proportion like you talked about the puffer fish but that's exactly what happens it goes way beyond what a normal person in a relationship could could tolerate if you're the other person for example and like we, we said that because if we think about if there's such a thing as healthy which would be me uh right got it <laughs> yeah that uh, several people, including both my wife and my mom, would disagree. Yeah, there's a there's a long list. I could give you a <laughs> hey, long list right, if you like. Yeah. But that's okay. Everybody it's knows. Fine. Me. But We're, God, He's also you, like you're going you're like doing doing the best you can. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> there is um, what I like about Coet is Coet says that there is a healthy form of narcissism that um, we do have to find ways to to uh, uh, aggrandize to puffer fish at times. And so there is a window of narcissistic behavior that could be acceptable, you know, that uh, that would be okay. You don't get stuck. Like you can think um, if you come home and it's been a long day and your wife says, uh, you know, um, hey, you forgot to take the trash out again and now we're this is the third week in a row the trash is built up. And mm -hmm. um, you suddenly may feel, uh-oh, um, a sense of I suck, I'm a lousy husband, once again, and maybe there's a lot of things during the day that made you give that feeling. At that moment, you might puffer fish. You might be able to say, you know, and you might do it immediately, or yeah. you might find yourself telling your wife how many people today complimented you on your shoes. Right. And all of those <laughs> are... that sort of move away. <laughs> but it also generates, and we do that. And, and I, one of the things that I'm going to work with, um, with, uh, with, uh, mental health professionals when we talk about narcissism I often ask them as part of the, the, the to after uh, to, to look for after we talk about this when they're hanging out with friends hanging out with family look at the way the people around them uh, manage narcissistic injury and if somebody comes and sits down and starts telling everybody about their the trip to Greece that they have planned and how great it's gonna be some people will receive that with no problem at all, but you'll see some of them are like, there'll be envy into the room. And you can literally see right. how a group of people navigate this, this impingement. And uh, not pathologically, I mean, I guess it's possible if somebody gets a fork in the eye or, uh, you know, right. some, you suddenly call someone a whore and throw a chair. Something like that, that can happen. Right, right. But, uh, never, uh, never know when things I call that Thanksgiving out. in my house. That's what it's but, uh, like. But, uh, Thanksgiving, I got but, it. But uh, you, um, you, or they can, come back with the idea of my. I got a better vacation. Right, there you than go. You. See, yeah, you know, that and it's kind of thing. literally a moment when someone is attempting to, to to moderate and navigate that impingement. And so, there are literally, you know, hundreds of impingements that we may incur throughout the day. <laughs> <laughs>